I suck at jujitsu. How do I suck less? Hey everybody, this is Josh McKinney, and I just want to welcome you to the newest episode of the I Suck at Jiu-Jitsu show. So today, we are going to talk about something in Jiu-Jitsu that is almost a little taboo still. And um, there are all kinds of different angles we can look at this, uh, but I thought what would be simplest if we looked at what physicality is, this is physicality. We're going to look at physical attributes, how they can help you in jiu-jitsu, how to increase your physical attributes if you can, um, and why you would want to do that. Uh, and then we'll also look at things that are, again, I think these are just jujitsu discussions that I hear a lot, um, but things that people worry about like, am I using too much strength when I roll? Or this guy uses too much strength I uh, I didn't really use, lose to him. He was just stronger than me. And so we're going to talk about all those things today and just look at some thoughts on physicality. And so uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's episode. All right, guys. So physicality in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Is it a sin? Is it wrong on the mats? In the morality of jiu-jitsu mats, is it wrong to be strong? And I don't think anyone ever directly just answers this for most people. It is looked at often. You'll see a lot of different coaches. They'll do stuff like, yeah, yeah, yeah you need to stop using so much strength. You need to stop muscling. Um, and I think that there are definitely times that a coach should say that. But in general, in jujitsu, this has just become the standard advice. And here is the reason that I think this is the standard advice. Because um, we're just, again, looking at what physicality is. Uh, I think uh, uh, explaining a, a situation that I see happen often. And it is blue belts beating black belts. And I think a lot of people, they get worried when they see things like this. Like, wait, does jujitsu not work anymore? Uh, no, jujitsu works very, very well. Grappling works very, very well. But we have to look at what we're actually doing. And when we are grappling someone, yes, it is the techniques that we know. It is the positions that we know. It is us trying to execute the jujitsu that we know. But then there is this big struggle and it is for people understanding how to take that jujitsu that they know and then use it executed on the mat. There are these people that can do that better and can even do it a lot of time without really knowing the technique. They can use their strength, their speed, their flexibility. They can use attributes that other people do not have that are physical. They can win rounds. They can, again, be blue belts beating black belts. How is this? A lot of it has to do with physicality. And since this is the case, and since then you can't go, let's say that this blue belt submits the black belt coach. One, we talked about this last week, how hard it is for black belts, uh, for everybody to accept loss and, and to just not have a, an ego or not have an ego response when they get submitted in training. And I think that it's a really important habit, but I noticed that black belts struggle with this. And it to me is just a flaw in how we look at all these things, how we look at physicality, how we look at jujitsu training and how we look at even at our coaches. Okay. Um, my friend, Chris makes this really, really great point. He says, so, um, you know, he talks about soccer. He is from England, so he calls it football. Um, but he talks about soccer and he says, so the 
the people on the best teams, do you think that their coaches can beat them in soccer? No, of course not. These are the best soccer players in the world. And then he says, so do you think that their coaches were at one point the best soccer players in the world? And again, the answer is no. Most of the coaches were not the best soccer players in the world. But then how come they're qualified to coach? Because in the jujitsu space, we don't do that. If you can't beat me, you're not allowed to teach me anything. That is how a lot of jujitsu is still treated. I told you guys, we talked about this last week on whether or not I think you should do that. Um, but that is just the world that we live in. Okay. And to me, a lot of it simply has to do with just not understanding what physicality is. It's really hard for people to, to grasp that jujitsu is not just a list of techniques on a wall. It is a combination of all kinds of different things. It is not just techniques that you know. Sometimes I will not be playing techniques against a person. I will only hand fight somebody. Hand fighting is a skill, okay? Yes, it's knowledge-based. I need to know where my hands need to be, but I can go with a lot of good guys that know where their hands should be too and still win. They know, we both know the same thing. I just have a better skill. I'm just better at that specific skill. Whatever it goes with it, creating angles, uh, being in the right upper body position, those things are gonna go in with my hand fighting, knowing which hand fight to go into, but it is a skill. It is not a technique. So now jujitsu is a combination of the techniques you know and the skills you have. Well, then you have to look that jujitsu is physical because again, back to other sports, we don't complain in soccer that we were the better soccer player. This guy was just twice as fast as us and that's the only reason that he beat us in the game. We don't make that excuse. Why? Because we understand that running is a physical attribute. It's, it's something like being fast is this physical attribute, and it's really helpful for soccer. In jiu-jitsu, physicality is the same way. Being flexible, guys that have good balance, people that can just can bench press you off of them, people that can fight for hours, right? People with crazy cardio. People with crazy speed, these people that have a lot of physicality, when they start to learn to take the ideas of jujitsu and the skills of jujitsu, the techniques of jujitsu, and apply it to their physicality, they're dominant. But what's interesting is a lot of them can even use that physicality to fill gaps in knowledge, to fill gaps in being consistent in training sometimes. But the big takeaway, the big thing that I think people need to understand is that physicality matters. It is something that we have to deal with and around. When I'm going with somebody, I am often thinking of their physicality. I'm going, holy smokes, this person's really strong and I can't win any upper body fights with them. I will stop fighting upper body fights with them. I'll start to fight to their legs or the opposite wow, this person is, their legs are so strong. I can't even, I can get in on leg locks and can't finish. They're so strong. I'll start to try to just put them on their butt and get on top and try to play top from there, right? When you're fighting somebody, you're using jujitsu, you're trying to eliminate their physicality. I love the way John Danaher, I think it was when he was on Lex Friedman, he explained this kind of idea. And he says, okay, so, um, and he's just explaining how, why strength matters. And he says, so let's say he's like, wh whatever way we would actually measure someone's you know, total physical strength. He said, but let's say that we have somebody that has 100 units of total physical strength. And then we have somebody that has 80 units of total physical strength with jujitsu. The person with 80 units, for instance, will get an arm bar and they'll start to go hip in and start to try to finish this arm bar. And if the person with 100 physical units of strength was able to access all 100, they would probably be able to get out no matter what. But let's say you have some good control on the shoulder. Maybe you only get access to 40 units of strength. Well, now the guy with 80 units of strength is stronger in this position because he's using his entire body. He still has 80 units of strength that he has access to. 
So since that is the game, coming in with 200 units of strength, 300 units of strength makes the game even harder, right? And so when we're looking at training, when we're looking at being in the gym, dealing with physical people, there are a few ways to look at this. I really just wanted to make sure that we defined what physicality was. Now I'll give you guys, I kind of gave some general feel around type uh, examples of what physicality is. Now let's look at some really direct examples of what physicality is. And this is kind of how I explain physicality to my students. I look at strength. I look at how long you can use that strength. Okay. So that's my version of cardio. It's not if you're breathing heavy, sometimes you're breathing heavy, but you still, you, you, I'll have guys breathing so heavy and they'll still be strong. It doesn't really matter that he's breathing heavy. He has access to his strength. Okay. Uh, speed and flexibility. Those are really the physical attributes that I look at. You can t- you can say balance, but my argument is balance is more of a skill um, and less of just a physical attribute. I think if you learn how to uh, be at the right distance all the time, you would look like you had phenomenal, unbelievable jujitsu balance. Um, but I think it's more of a technical, it's more of a thing to understand and then do better in rounds. It's not some physical thing that guys who can balance on, um, those balance balls, I've trained with a lot of them. I don't notice any difference in their ability to stop a sweep when I control both legs. No difference at all. It is in no way, shape or form harder. Now, that being said, guys that are super duper strong they can stop sweeps where I have both ankles and they're not doing balance ball stuff. So that's my argument to why I don't think of, of balance as a physical attribute. Um, I mean, it is, you could also make the argument, well, what if somebody has vertigo? That's a very physical attribute and then they wouldn't be able to do jujitsu. So I get what you're saying. Chill out. Just let me say that balance isn't, let's just say it's a skill. Maybe it's a combination of both regardless, strength, speed, flexibility. Those are the ones that we're mainly going to look at. When you think about this from a jujitsu perspective, I always like to think about who has access to what. When you really think about it from top and bottom, open guard, okay? Uh, The bottom person does not really have much access to their strength besides in like a few very specific directions. They have basically no access to their speed until they start to get connection, But the place that they tend to win, and I'll explain this a little bit differently in a second, but the place they tend to win um, or be able to access physicality is flexibility. The bottom player tends to be able to use flexibility way more than strength and speed. The top player tends to be able to use strength and speed because they're on their feet. When they go to their knees, they tend to be able to use more strength, but less speed. They tend to be less dynamic, right? And so... That to me is kind of the main battle of physicality. And so if I am on bottom, I'm generally not worried about being strong. I'm not, of course, being strong, being able to make certain things happen, make off balances happen matters a whole, whole lot, but that's not what I'm thinking about. When I'm on top, I'm thinking about getting the squeeze on somebody, right? That is trying to be strong. I'm thinking about creating really strong angles because I'm on both feet and I can be athletic while I'm on both feet. That is my physicality. But these are things that I'm thinking in rounds in the gym sometimes, in rounds when I compete every time, trying to marry my jujitsu that is technical and efficient and then add physicality to that. So it does need to be something that you can separate out of your jujitsu and your jujitsu still works, right? But you cannot say that it isn't part of jujitsu. You cannot say that being strong, being fast, being physical isn't part of jujitsu because jujitsu is real world. Jujitsu is about is about fighting. Whether you call a jujitsu match a fight or not, jujitsu itself as an art is about fighting. It is about dominant position. It's about tapping people out. This is fighting, right? So when we look at that, fighting is a physical thing. Why do we try to separate? I understand that 
that does not make somebody more technical if they can just beat you, if they're just way bigger and stronger. But the beauty of jujitsu is that you win or you lose, and then you have something to work. Eventually, you will beat those big people. If you stay in it and they don't, eventually you will beat people that can outmatch you physically. I have seen it with people that are even like under 120 pounds, with guys under 120 pounds where they would roll with people and it was like for years. It was like, no, nobody can go hard with this guy because he's just too small. He can't even get jujitsu to work. He's just too small. And well, specific guy I'm thinking of started to lift with my dad, wink, wink. Um, but one day he had enough jujitsu and then enough physicality in, in his own right to marry those two things together and start to like beat big, big guys, like 200 pound plus guys weighing 120, you know, like a, a lot of girls who struggle with just being small, this dude would was smaller than a lot of them that would struggle with this and eventually just stayed in it long enough. And then it was like people were dodging the little guy. People didn't want to go with the little guy because they were like, man, he just thrashes me. It's embarrassing. And there's nothing I can do because he's just better, right? He's not beating me physically. He's just beating me with jujitsu. That's where we should be striving to get to. And so you've got to be able to take that physicality out because if you – Build a game that is totally reliant on a certain amount of strength, and then you get tired, you will lose every single time. But if you could do jujitsu tired because your game isn't reliant on strength, getting tired isn't going to be a huge deal. Or even on the other side of it, if you go compete and your game is built completely on strength and you fight somebody who can just match you in strength, not even be stronger, just match you, you'll probably lose if this person was focused on jujitsu. If you go to a tournament and you decide and you like never use strength and maybe a few weeks before you go, okay, I'm going to compete. I'm going to add a little strength back into my jujitsu. You will find that your jujitsu works 1,000 times better because you learned to roll without strength first, right? You removed the physical attributes and then you go, okay, this is how, this is how I'll get better. Honestly, for me, I've tried this for years and years and it's gotten to a point where I don't, even as a very flexible person, I don't tend to loop my legs anymore to retain guard. I try to retain guard in a way that does not require my physical attributes. And again, it's just so I can have really, really efficient jujitsu. This isn't my idea. I didn't come up with this. This is something that was shared to me. I've told you guys this before um, by Sean Williams, and it was shared to him by Hodger Gracie. Hodger Gracie had won weight in open class two years in a row at the world championships. Um, almost every, all but one match by submission. And it, that's obviously ridiculous. That was unheard of. The craziest part is in his gym, his best training partner was a purple belt that I believe weighed under 200 pounds. And you look at that and you go, well, how did he get so good? Well, his answer to Sean Williams was I learned to roll without strength. I learned to roll without physicality. And then he goes, and then when you add your physicality back, you add your strength back, then you're way better right? Because that same idea, my job is to limit how many units of strength you have access to and then use as many units of strength as I can, as I have access to. And then when I get those really lopsided, you have five units and I have 100 units that I have access to, I win every time in those fights, right? That really is to me the what of physicality, okay? So now we're going to go this will probably be a shorter episode. We're going to go into a commercial now and then we will uh, we'll come back and we'll look more at the why of physicality and then just some more ideas on how you should be using it and how you shouldn't. Be. 
What's up, guys? Josh McKinney here sitting down with my dad, Steve, and we are just talking about something exciting. We run SimplifyingJiuJitsu.com together, and we have really the biggest product we've ever put together, the most work we've ever put into yes, a product, work. and it is called Efficient BJJ Strength in 15 Minutes. Yeah, I wanted to call it uh, Train Muscles and Save Joints, but I like yours better. I think that that is one of the biggest benefits is the fact that you do save your joints and you don't hurt your muscles. But I think one of the biggest selling points is that it's 15 minutes a week, maybe, maybe twice a week. And, but you get stronger. And that is the number one idea behind what we do. And then what we do is we put things in a simplified, logical, uh, common sense order um, so that you can kind of see how to enhance your training and keep yourself um, from hurting yourself outside of the gym because jujitsu is hard enough on your body. There is so much injury risk in jujitsu. Why in the heck would we have injury risk in our training? Yeah, absolutely. And so to me right now, it makes a lot of sense already. But if someone were to purchase it in this month, what's really exciting is we have this thing going called Steve's Bundle. We're also going to throw in for half off how to train jujitsu and 60, what is this? Train until 60 and beyond 60 moves that work into your 60s. Wait, wait, say that again, Josh. What do they get? But wait, there's <laughs> more. If you, for 50% off, you can get how to train jujitsu, which is a Steve and Josh McKinney product. And... 60 moves that work when you're 60, which I was watching back recently. We have a long haired Bryce Allen getting neon bellied. That was when I made the post about him dying and us reviving him. <laughs> and his mom was calling. She actually thought, thought we he killed died. him. Yeah. <laughs> Woof. Great, great thing, but great product too. Yes, uh, it'll, be, I, I, it'll be helpful. It really does help people and it'll give, it'll allow them to think differently. It is different than anything that anyone has out there. And so the only way to get it is to go to simplifyingjujitsu.com. You can go to simplifyingjujitsu.com slash 15. That will take you to a page that gives you a little more information, gives you some thumbnail or gives you some uh, um, interviews with different athletes that have benefited uh, and just a lot more information on the product itself. And you guys can check that out at simplifyingjujitsu.com. And we are back. So now let's look a little more at the why. Why Why uh, does physicality matter? Okay. We kind of established that it does. We kind of established that you either get submitted or you don't. You really can't remove all these other, well, this guy's stronger. This guy's faster. I was tired. I did more rounds, whatever. None of those things matter. They really don't. All is I explain it too. They may help you feel better in the moment, but in truth, when you get submitted by something, when you lose to something, when you make some type of excuse, no matter what that excuse is, you rob yourself of the ability to use jujitsu to get better and not lose to that thing anymore. Because if you put it, make it all about strength, then it's only going to be about strength. So strength has to be, to me, secondary, right? I'm selling a strength and conditioning program, but it needs to be secondary to jujitsu, but it also needs to be there for injury prevention for man, for anything. Strength is so important in the jujitsu space. And I have so many guys that have been amazing technicians and have been for years. And then we added five to 10 pounds of muscle to them, five pounds, even right over six months, over, you know, not, not over quite a while. Not like crazy, fast, crazy results, but just added some strength and they will say like, man, nothing has helped my jujitsu better. Well, why? Because you used to have in all these positions, you used to have access to 60 units of strength and now you have access to 70. You're doing the same jujitsu, the same positions. You just have more power. And now from the other standpoint too, and this is what is always wild to people is this is like, for me, how I can roll forever. I can't roll hard forever, but I don't roll hard. Honestly, you will see me in a lot of matches with high-level guys, and you'll go, is Josh trying as hard as he can? And the answer is no, and that is not some crazy idea. It's not some arrogant idea either. It is pacing. 
I only have so much physicality that I have access to. And in a 10 minute round, I go, I want to, I think it's, I have a lot of power. I think I can use a lot of power, but I have to be really strategic about when I use it. Let's say I go out on the feet and I fight so hard for the takedown and maybe I even get close a few times, but it's still zero, zero and I'm gassed. And we're two minutes in, three minutes into the match. I sold out on physicality. I don't think you should do that. One of the best ways to do that is to be able to use jujitsu with and without your physicality. Again, talk about hand fighting. For me, when I'm on the feet, my hand fighting is always pretty decent. When I start to add speed to my hand fighting, I start to add my real angles and I start to really push myself on it, I feel like it's really hard to deal with. But it's not until I really add that physicality. If I go gentle against a really high-level wrestler, he's going to throw me if I try to go gentle. I've got to go hard. I've got to add my physicality. You learn these things by feel, but you can only feel if you remove physicality. I always think of it like this. If I flex every muscle as hard as I could for like 15 seconds, which for most jujitsu people, for a lot of jujitsu people, not most, but for quite a few, That's what their rounds feel like. Their whole five-minute round feels like they're flexing for the whole five minutes. But if I do that and you poked me in the back, like just with like your finger, I probably wouldn't even feel it. How in the world could I expect to feel my way through fighting another human being when I'm that tense? I don't think that you can learn feel with too much reliance on strength. I think you can make stuff work, but I think that you are limiting yourself. So then back to the original argument, the guy that's going, hey, bro, you should be focused on technique. You're just doing athletic stuff. Is he right? Well, to an extent, you shouldn't just say, I will never use my strength. It just doesn't make sense to me. I will roll with guys, especially newer guys. And this happens still as a black belt. And they'll say something to me like, you know, we'll get done with the round. Like, yeah, I was really trying to not use my strength. And I'm like, bro, you're 240 in a white belt and jacked. The strength is the only thing that you could have tried to use against me. Were you going to out technique me? You've been training for three months. And so my argument is, there was a time to use some physicality, it would be in a round with me, right? I get also using physicality can be taboo just in a sense of when you go hard, if somebody's not ready to go hard, it can look like a jerk move. Let's make sure we have that disclaimer in. I never threw that in in this episode, but let's make sure that we have that disclaimer in. People could not like you for being too physical, right? You can get injured way more when you use too much physicality. You can injure people way more when you use too much physicality, especially when you become reliant on it. When you become reliant on physicality and your jujitsu doesn't work, especially against people that you're better than, like lower level belts, when you're better than them, you should be able to beat them without using strength or with using very minimal strength. And that's how you're gonna learn to feel your way through jujitsu. And that's how you're gonna learn your way to pace your way through rounds. When I'm going with somebody tough, there is no way I could fight it 100% the whole time. It's like, I can't sprint for 10 minutes. You know what I mean? Like, I would gas. There is just no way that I could give 100% of what my body has for a long period of time and expect to not just crash. So, of course, once you add physicality, you've got to learn to manage it. You've got to learn to keep that strength for a long period of time. But here's the kicker. When you are stronger, this is a really roundabout way. I think I started this sentence like eight minutes ago. When you are stronger, your cardio gets better. Why? Because if you have access to your 80 units of strength when you used to have access to 60 and the finish only requires 55 units of strength, you're almost at max effort on 60. You're not even close. You're not even close if you have 80 units of strength. This will let you train longer. You will get to, because you're using less of your full strength. 
If you don't believe me, roll with somebody you have 40 pounds on and just go, I'm going to only match their strength level, especially somebody you're close with jujitsu wise. I'm only going to match their strength level. I'm not going to muscle them around. You will go, holy smokes, they're getting tired and I could just roll forever at this pace because it's not max effort for you. So strength not only helps you in the middle of rounds, it helps you get more rounds, which in truth, being able to remove that physicality so you can get more rounds, you're going to be better at jujitsu. So it's this really roundabout thing. We all know it's important, but it's almost like it's never just defined. Hey, this is why it's important. This is why jujitsu athletes all seem to care about strength and conditioning because sometimes you will fight somebody and go, I know that I was just as good as this guy, but he was like 10% stronger than me and I couldn't beat him. And the truth is that is going to happen. He is going to be just as strong as you, but the only thing that matters is if you win or lose. So you need an answer to that. Maybe the answer is you need to learn to access your own physicality a little more. Maybe the answer is you rely too much on your physicality. And as soon as you met someone who could match it, you lost. And so either way you look at it, I really think that conditioning, you know, those things that we talked about, the three main physical attributes, right? Strength, speed, flexibility. And then of course, just the fourth one, ability to stay strong, to stay fast, to stay, I guess, flexible. Does your flexibility diminish when you get tired? I feel like I'm just as flexible. Um, but where your, your physical attributes start to diminish, uh, and being able to prevent that from happening. This is so important, but here is the biggest disclaimer, the biggest caveat from this whole episode. If you have to sacrifice jujitsu progression for these things, I'd argue that it's not worth it. If you're getting injured in your strength and conditioning, if you're getting injured in your cardio, if you're getting injured in whatever you're doing in your yoga, it's so extreme, it is too much on your body and it is causing you to miss jujitsu. Even without injury, it's just causing you to not get to train. Jujitsu is always the primary answer. It just is. When the goal is to win more, to get better, the primary answer is jujitsu. So Again, that guy that talks about how you should be focused on technique, to an extent he's right, but that means that you just need to be able to remove your physicality sometimes. We talk about this idea, we'll relay it to one more thing we talk about on the podcast constantly. We talk about this idea of a performance day. We talk about this idea of skill development days, progression days, and only doing like one really hard day. Where do you think, what day do you think I'm applying all my physicality to? My performance day. And so this is just to me as a jiu-jitsu athlete, especially as a competitor, I think this is important, but I really think when you look at it from the standpoint of just understanding what physicality is and how to use it and how to learn not to use it, I really think it's, it would just be so beneficial for so many people with their jiu-jitsu. And like I said, I won't go super long in this episode, probably just end it right there. Um, but I hope these thoughts on physicality just kind of helped you guys put into context uh, a little more of your wins and losses at the gym. So uh, I guess the big takeaways here, don't, don't let physicality be an excuse for you ever. Somebody else just is a, a, a more physical because I have guys that can make my jujitsu not work and they are incredibly physical, but it is a combination of physicality and jujitsu that makes my jujitsu not work. And so to me, I can't really reach them physically. There's nothing I, I, I don't think so. Um, but I could probably get a little better at jujitsu. I could focus a little more on my jujitsu. I can focus a little more on these positions that I get to. And so jujitsu is always the primary answer. But then you have this secondary thought of physicality training training your strength off the mats. To me, I've told you guys, you know, I've pushed it, had a commercial on it. I do one fifth in season. I do one 15 minute workout a week out of season. I do two, probably eight to 10 minute workouts a week, um, out of competition season. 
And I really do notice, I mean, and you can, again, you can look this up on me. I've just gotten better as a jujitsu athlete. And it's been really great, especially because I didn't have to compromise on not taking steroids. Uh, and so that was, I'm really happy that to let you guys know that. Um, but, uh, two, just figuring out recovery, figuring out intensity. You know, I told you guys most training methods are really understanding volume and intensity. Uh, most ways of running a whole gym is understanding the right balance of volume and intensity and strength training is exactly the same. So if you guys are interested in efficient BJJ, well, no, no, sorry, efficient strength. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Efficient BJJ strength. I always mix it up. Efficient BJJ strength in 15 minutes. I should write that on my hand. Uh, but yeah, if you guys are interested in that, be sure to check it out. We're running a really cool deal. Um, as I told you guys already, we're running a cool deal this month that if you buy it, you will get an option to also purchase for half off a bundle of my dad's last uh, two instructionals, which are how to learn jujitsu, which he and I did together, and six train until 60 and beyond, 60 moves that w work when you are 60 plus years old. Um, we also, I don't know when we're releasing it, if we're going to already have it out yet, but I have a a live round with my dad that I want to show you guys because we talk about how we roll live and we kind of went, you know, we kind of turned it up a little bit and I wanted to uh, kind of show you guys with this training method, um, with the right training methods, with the right understanding, how you can make it to 62 years old and roll with your bigger, stronger black belt adult competitor son and roll pretty darn hard. And uh, I think you guys are going to be impressed with it. If it's already out, I'll be sure to throw a link in the uh, uh, in the description of this episode. If not, I will be sure to send it out to you guys uh, on the Gee Gazette. If you're not a member of the Gee Gazette, you can always just jump onto the Three Lenses ebook. Go to simplifyingjujitsu.com slash three. Download that ebook completely free. It will put you on the Gee Gazette and you'll be able to hear from me, see all these cool videos that we have. We have some vlogs coming out soon, uh, a lot of good stuff. So if you don't subscribe to the Josh McKinney BJJ YouTube channel, now is probably the time to do it. Um, we've really been upping the content and I really think that you guys are gonna enjoy it. Um, I actually didn't go, I didn't cut into outro. I just kind of started to talk myself into the outro. So I guess that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope that you guys check out this new instructional. And most importantly, I hope that today's episode helps you guys suck just a little bit less at jujitsu. Have a great day, guys.